In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The intention for this Mass is for Francis Patarakia and Sister Patricia Hanlon. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter and John were speaking to the people about the resurrection of Jesus, the captain of the temples arrested them and placed them in custody. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. 
This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among human beings by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus refers to himself uh, as the good shepherd and then calls us his sheep, I have a hard time thinking this is a term of affection from our Lord. You see, I've worked with real sheep. Uh, I had a friend who had a sheep farm up the Ottawa Valley outside Buckingham, Quebec. I know that sheep, well, they can be pretty awful. They can be stinky, stubborn, surprisingly aggressive, and that's not just the rams, the ewes you have to watch out for. And while they have some good instincts, boy, they can be so stupid. I'm sure we're all aware that for someone to describe any group of people as sheep is pejorative. It means they're easily led and not necessarily led to a good place. That they are naive, overly trusting of those who may appear to be shepherds, but are actually leading them to slaughter. So what do you think of our Savior, our Redeemer, our Guide, who calls us a bunch of sheep? Is this someone to follow? Indeed, over the course of the past 50 years, we've seen a following away from the church, even as many of those who distance themselves from their Catholic parish maintain a sense of Catholic identity. They still want to get married here. They want to have the baptisms of their babies here, the first communions for their kids, to have a parent's funeral mass here. But they back away from being made a true member of the herd or the flock you know, whipped into line and told where to go and what to do. They'd rather be, to ironically twist our Lord's own words, sheep without a shepherd. You know, Christian and Catholic life, according to apostolic teaching, doesn't look like freedom to them. This liberating of the prisoners that Jesus speaks of in the gospel, they don't see it. Rather, it looks like the taking on of a burden of rules and regulations, of disciplines and duties. And if this is the cross Christ would have us take up, no wonder so many would rather leave it just lying there. Must we be part of the flock? Why can we not strike out on our own? Are we not free? Do we not have free will? Why be like mindless sheep and do what the church tells us and to do it sheepishly? Such thoughts put me in mind of Immanuel Kant, the great philosopher, who rightly spotted the modern error in reasoning and thinking that way. Free will, the independent mind, these things given to us by God, they're not to be understood as some kind of perverse torture inflicted on us by the Almighty. You know, you have free will, freedom to choose, but if you don't choose my way, I'm going to punish you. You have free will and reason, but stop thinking and obey. We then see the shepherd not with his protective staff, but rather threatening with his corrective rod. Now, Kant got it right. The freedom we have is not a perverse freedom to choose to disobey God's law. It's not the freedom to rebel and then be punished. The freedom we have is from something else. It's a freedom to move past our animal nature and go in search of God. That is what we are free to do. To be clear, this isn't refusing your appetites and desires for its own sake. That's the philosophy of Stoicism, 
that self-control, self-discipline, the rational ordering of one's life is its own reward. That's not God. Now, there is some truth that there is value in that life of self-control, self-discipline, of putting your life in order, reducing the chaos of life by exercising control in the limited sphere of one's personal life. It does help you. A clean home and a disciplined mind help one cope with all sorts of problems. But more importantly, they provide the environment, the intellectual disposition to do work productively, whether it's you know, writing a novel or building a boat. The Christian life, however, is to go beyond mundane pursuits and seek eternal communion with God. Now, St. Augustine famously wrote on this question of our free will, and he concluded that while we potentially can recognize in our intellect what is good, our will does not always obey what logic and reason tells it is best. As St. Paul quipped, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We are fallen from grace as sons of Adam and daughters of Eve. It is only by God's grace that we have any capacity to be freed from the oppression that is our animal nature. We need God to find God. Our animal instincts, our biological drives, hormones, you know, these can be overpowering and we can become their slaves, you know. I've tried to keep sheep from running up onto the grassy field. I've seen cattle charge the feed trough. And you see how strong is the drive to satisfy hunger. You know, think about sexual desire. Take your life in your hands when you stand between the stallion and his mare, between the bull and the cow. When we look at Jesus, we see in him a man who masters himself in both regards. We have reports of his fasting. We know he has no wife and no apparent concern to have one. And that is not a condemnation of marriage, for it is something that our Lord was happy to celebrate famously at Cana. Rather, Jesus is showing us where to search and what will be needed to be taken on that journey of discovery. You're going to need virtue, continence in all things. And that includes chastity, prayerfulness, and above all, patience. And then there's that willingness to give it all away, including your life, if it should be required. You know, one of my great heroes of the faith is Basil of Caesarea, or St. Basil the Great. He was a man of towering intellect who helped untangle the conundrum that was the Trinity for the early church. He established what many considered to be the very first hospital. He was a great innovator in what we today would call social services, the care of the poor, the sick, the widowed, and the orphaned through good organization and administration of the church's resources, both in money and talented people. His starting point in developing all of that was not in going to some ancient equivalent of management school. It was through mastery of self, of following Christ's example so as to tame the desires and control the appetites. You know, in this, he recognized that of the two holy choices set before him, of marriage or celibate singleness, the latter was to be preferred. The sense one gets from his many letters to parishioners and friends who lived abroad was not that he regarded singleness as inherently superior, but rather easier in terms of his goal of eternal communion with God. Family life and worldly career were both filled with temptations, but there was also the heavy weight of responsibility for one's family, one's spouse, one's children that tug upon us through those deep biological drives. It's not that there's nothing worthy in loving one's children or striving to achieve in this life so as to bring honor to your family. It's just that these things can be so absorbing, sometimes distracting, often emotionally painful, and so discouraging. And because ultimately they are about this world that we forget our heavenly vocation. We then substitute for life with God the goals of, say, you know, marriage, owning our own business, our home mortgage-free, putting all the kids through college, retiring to, I don't know, Florida or Arizona. It's not that those things are wrong in themselves. It's just not in Christian understanding the ultimate point of this life. You then see how Basil came to the conclusion that choosing celibacy and eschewing a worldly career seemed actually the easier path to God. 
Nonetheless, Basil achieved much in his life, and you would speak of that as a career. In addition to what I've already mentioned, he famously stood up to the emperor in defense of the faith, at risk to his life. Through his writing, he laid the foundations of what is core Christian doctrine that we follow to this day. He achieved these things by following Jesus, by being guided by the Good Shepherd, even as he may have passed up what may have looked like greener pastures, cooler still waters, as he was guided to something much, much better. Basil trusted Christ not only to take him to that better place, but also to keep him from the wolves, from sin that stalks us and seeks to tear apart our souls, sin that more often than not comes like a wolf in sheep's clothing, comes as the worldly concern that leads us to worldly solutions, the broad, flat, downhill path to that wide and open gate that leads to perdition's flames. Basil trusted in Christ because Jesus is the good shepherd who we know has laid down his life and by doing so has defeated sin. And in our trust in him, we'll always chase off those wolves. He never runs away. Basil trusted in him, moreover, because Christ shows the way. He knows the path. Because Christ knew Basil, as he knows each of us, calling us by name so as to call us back into the sheepfold. But not to be a mere sheep. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has yet to be revealed, but that will be known if we follow the Good Shepherd. Let us now stand and confess our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now offer our petitions to our Father in heaven. For the Pope, bishops, and all leaders of the Church, may God guide them in their efforts to shepherd his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God help them see those whom they serve with the eyes of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and those worried about the health of their loved ones, and we pray especially for Brenda Tozer. May the Lord protect them from all needless anxiety and bring them health of mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Holy Spirit help us and guide us to hear the shepherd's voice in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, especially Sister Patricia Hanlon and Francis Pararakia, may they experience the fullness of joy with God and the saints in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Shepherd, so rooted in 
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delights in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you 
and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. There Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Augustine and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and Wayne, our Auxiliary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the, kingdom, the, power, the power, and the glory, and the glory are yours now and, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, roof, but only say the word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. 
May he, God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, who by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. May you, who have been already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Be to God. Amen.